Paper three is a very different beast. Uh, it's a slightly shorter exam, uh, and it's all about your field work and a pre-release. Field work can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming, so I'm going to make two videos. One video is summarizing the physical field work we did at Red and Green, and one video summarizing the human field work we've done at Red and Green. Okay, so this uh, video here is just for the river physical field work we have conducted. Okay, it's predominantly focusing on the new uh, field trip to uh, Blaise, Ca Blaise Castle Estate and the Hazelbrook River. So for the year 11th of 2023, your uh, your one in Margan Park was slightly different. The question was worded slightly differently, but on the whole, it was doing exactly the same thing. We we're trying to see whether the river fit the Bradshaw model we've been learning about in class. Okay, so in the case of uh, the current new trip, is we're looking at does the Hazel Brook fit the Bradshaw model is our inquiry question. Okay, the data we collect, there's two types of data. There's the primary data, which is collected by yourself. Those included some field sketches you did on the day, some pictures, some you, we measured the river depth, width, velocity, wetted perimeters, sediment size, angularity, river gradient. And some secondary data collected by other people. News article, old, old photographs for years like the current year 11s in 2023. Some data from the field FSC or the Field Trip Study Council uh, will be count as secondary data. Okay. The importance for the location, well, in either way, uh, the location is, um, in the case of Blaze Castle, less than 20 minutes away from this school. Okay, you can get there by a train, cycle, or walk even. It means everyone can join for a very limited budget, uh, which makes it fair and more equal. Um, the river is appropriate because it's within a small drainage basin system. Okay, it's easy to carry out the study, it's study, it's easy to access. You can walk basically from the lower course to the upper course, which makes this incredibly relevant. Okay, it was the same in Margan Park in 2022 with a, when uh, year, current year were in year 10 um, and although it was two hours away it was easily accessible by coach and it, we could do it uh, on a limited budget as well um the sites at the river but in either case was uh, are quite close to each other makes it easy to compare okay the risks are all the same uh one of them is to get lost okay so we asked people to stay in groups you were in the booklets you had emergency phone numbers of members of staff um you had a trip map and you had an itinerary of where we we're going what we we're doing so you knew where we where we could meet up okay uh obviously we're going to river one of the risks is drownings so there were first aiders on the site there were there was a safety briefing there was uh no unnecessary risk were taken by members members of staff we had ropes available along with flotation devices and the classic slip trips and falls we asked you to wear sensible footwear the first day it was on site and present at all times okay extreme weather could be an example of one uh, i'm thinking uh, droughts are especially when this trip always takes place in the summer sampling methods there's three types of sampling you need to know the reason we sample is because you can't collect every single rock in the river okay you can either do it systematically which is every 10 meters you stop and collect some rocks you can stratify it and decide to pick up some rocks at specific locations which is what a lot of what that we did we chose to have a site in this lower middle upper course and then you can randomize it you just sit down and pick up 10 random rocks around they're the three different types of sampling you can you need to be able to explain okay data collection methods we use data that we did the characteristics that looked at the depth width velocity the reason they were chosen was to allow with very, very minimal equipment and without much time collect some data that could help us uh, test the virtual model limitations we had very limited equipment uh, some statistics therefore might not have been reliable okay because we only had half a ranging pole or we only had um, so many ranging poles for the, uh, all the students um, sediment size and angularity we collected 10 rocks from each location to measure the sh shape and sizes um, it's easy to carry out it doesn't require much training uh it allows us to test the virtual model again limitation is the roundest index um of the uh, uh, for the shape of each rock is subjective some people might think it's category a b c it's just quite it's down to personal judgment um and therefore our statistics might not always be accurate and the final data collection method we big one we used was gr river gradient it measures the gradient the steepness of the river channel uh highlights the difference between different courses of the river and allows us to test the virtual model again however the kilometers we use were quite basic. They did not have many, we don't, didn't have many of these, and it's not guaranteed that everyone who uses it knows how to use it, despite our best efforts at explaining those, okay? Um, sometimes, therefore, we also had to rely on other people's data. Um, and there's a fourth method we use, which was a wetted perimeter, but that's slightly different. Um, not every group did it, and you don't necessarily need to talk about it in your exam, okay? From a data presentation method of, uh, of view, uh, we once you've got the methods, uh, the, you've got the data, you have to learn to present it. You can't just dump some numbers, okay? So we we taught you some specific skills in which you can present some numbers. Those skills were, for the river characteristics, we used a bar chart. The point of a bar chart, it allows us to show depth and width uh, between each site um, and compare that in meters. So it was uh, meters on y-axis, uh, sites on the x-axis. Uh, it's really useful to compare sites. Velocity, you would have had, um, you'd have had meters uh, per seconds and you would have had uh, each site is really clear easy comparison 
However, um, scale can be an issue uh, in, in when you do draw the graph, and then it can give a false impression that between each uh, site one, two, three, the river literally goes that way, and then w within two centimeters, go, it goes much smaller, much bigger. It's actually gradual, but we don't rep we don't sh show that gradient. Okay, um, sediment size and angularity. We made you draw some proportional symbols. It's the scale drawing of the rock and angular size using the roundness index. It's useful to show the different types of rocks that we found. It allows us to compare across sites. It can and allow someone who wasn't on the trip to see exactly what we were looking for okay however limitation is it uses an average size so it will it will if it'll hide an anomaly of a massive rock you might have picked up or a teeny tiny rock you picked up um and then the river gradient we use a long profile it shows the change the gradient change uh, from the upper to lower course it allows us to visually highlight the changes in the river course itself it's really it's really easy to see um and it's helpful for people who weren't there but it requires some really complex numeracy skills uh, in some cases, because if you end up having the angle at it with a kilometer and the length of the river, you kind of have to use a soccer to a sort of method to understand what the what the height was. If you do it, do it that way, especially for beach profiles, which our current year 11s did to do. Um, it can also give a false impression of massive changes between sites when actually it's all happening gr uh, gradually. So ultimately, our main results were that depth as we traveled upstream, uh, the channel got shallower. Okay, which is what you'd expect from the Bradshaw model. Width-wise, as you travel upstream, the channel got wider, which weirdly in this case wasn't what the Bradshaw model suggests. Okay, the Bradshaw model is over here. We'd expect it to be the other way around. Velocity, as you travel upstream, the velocity decreased. Again, that's what Bradshaw predicts. Um, or sediment, as you travel upstream, rocks got larger and, and more angular, what Bra exactly like Bradshaw expects. Okay, gradients as you travel upstream, the river channel became steeper. Again, what we would expect. So, according to the pressure model, the river's channel width should decrease as you travel upstream. That's our only anomaly. This was not the case with the Hazel Brook. Um, however, on the whole, we did find that the river does, does fit the Bradshaw model. That suggests the Bradshaw model is a useful model to me measure, me measure processes. Uh, but that's our results. Okay. The uh, statistical measures you need to be aware of for uh, paper three are mode, median, range, uh, mode, median, mean range sorry uh you do that in math and interquartile range uh, which we practice in class anyway okay but it's basically taking the median of the upper quartile the median of the lower quartile um and um subtracting them to find the interquartile range okay and then ultimately our conclusions were that overall the hazel brook river does fit the bradshaw model and it suggests that it's a useful model in assessing the river processes uh, our data is reliable because it was it mostly fits the model which suggests that uh, we got the right res we got the results we should have got um we also have uh, we had 100 students collecting data on the day so i i, I collected as data from several of you and made a massive average and so it's reliable in some ways because the sample is quite big however uh, there are limitations. We were using very cheap, limited equipment uh, that'll affect the results, uh, accuracy of the results. The river itself was really small, and actually, no one picked up the data from the exact same point. We all spread out along that river channel, therefore, it not actually all measuring the exact same spot. Um, evaluation wise, what went well is well, we collected a range of different primary data from a number of re uh, locations, allows for a solid conclusion. Some of the problems we encountered were that you had we had low water levels actually prevented us from collecting velocity uh, in, so, in site three in the upper course specifically. Our equipment was uh, had to be improvised sometimes because we just didn't have enough. So velocity, some of you had to use some leaves and oranges rather than the hydroprops. Hydroprops are really fragile, for instance. That's a big limitation. Um, the limitation as a result is that the data relied on averages. It could hide some anomalies. Lack of equipment made our data less accurate. Uh, and only spending the day there means that uh, there might be a biased result. Okay, we might have gone there after a drought. Uh, current year 11 will know all about that because we were in ridiculous heat waves in Wales when we were there. When we were in uh, Blaze Castle, actually, uh, for current year 10, it, we also had quite hot weather. Okay, uh, if we'd gone after a storm, it would have been very different. So, our limitation is that it was only is, is kind of one specific time in history. We didn't go several times. Next time, in order to overcome those limitations, the research could be carried out in a better, wider, bigger river. Okay, for safety reasons we don't. Uh, better equipment could have been carried out. If schools had loads of money, we could buy loads of equipment. Not, not the case, unfortunately. Um, for sites, we could select more sites along that same river. We collect data at different times of the day, at different times of the year, to improve the reliability of results. And ultimately, we didn't really use much secondary data. In Bayes Castle, there's not that many people who've measured the Basel Brook River, so we don't have that much data to compare, okay? Put all this together, and hopefully that gives you a really good understanding of what we did, what we collected, and what we can conclude from our uh, amazing trip to um, the Hazelbrook River in Blaze Castle, okay?